The Listeners by Walter de la Mer. Is there anybody there? said the traveller, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor. And a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveller's head, and he smote upon the door again a second time. Is there anybody there? he said. But no one descended to the traveller, no head from the leaf-fringed sill leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men, stood thronging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair, goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveller's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, and their stillness answering his cry, while his horse moved cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote on the door even louder and lifted his head. Tell them I came and no one answered that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners though every word he spake fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. Aye, they heard his foot upon the stirrup and the sound of iron on stone and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. La Belle Dame Sans Merci by John Keats Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, alone and palely loitering? The sedge has withered from the lake, and no birds sing. Oh, what can ail thee, knight at arms, so haggard and so woebegone? The squirrel's granary is full, and the harvest's done. I see a lily on thy brow, with anguish moist and fever dew, and on thy cheeks a fading rose, fast withereth too. I met a lady in the meads, full beautiful, a fairish child. Her hair was long, her foot was light, and her eyes were wild. I made a garland for her head, and bracelets too, and fragrant zone. She looked at me as she did love, and made sweet moan. I set her on my pacing steed, and nothing else saw all day long, for sidelong would she bend and sing a fairy's song. She found me roots of relish sweet, and honey wild, and manna dew, and sure in language strange she said, I love thee, true. She took me to her elfin grot, and there she wept and sighed full sore, and there I shut her wild, wild eyes with kisses for, and there she lulled me asleep, and there I dreamed, ah, woe betide, the latest dream I ever dreamed, on the cold hillside. I saw pale kings and princes too, pale warriors, death pale were they all, they cried, la belle dame sans merci, have thee in thrall. I saw their starved lips in the gloam, with horrid warning gape it wide, and I awoke and found me here on the cold hillside. And this is why I sojourn here, alone and palely loitering, though the sedge is withered from the lake and no birds sing. The Haunted by John Macefield Here, in this darkened room of this old house, I sit beside the fire. I hear again within the scutter where the mice carouse, without the gutter dropping with the rain. Opposite are black shelves of wormy books. To left, glazed cases, dusty with the same. 
Behind a wall with rusty guns on hooks To right the fire that chokes one panting flame Over the mantel, black as funeral cloth A portrait hangs, a man whose flesh the worm Has moored this hundred years, whose clothes the moth A century since has channeled to a term I cannot see his face, I only know he stares at me That man of long ago I light the candles in the long brass sticks. I see him now, a pale-eyed, simpering man, framed in carved wood, wherein the death watch ticks. A most dead face, yet when the work began, that face, the pale puce coat, the simpering smile, the hands that hold a book, the eyes that gaze, moved to the touch of mind a little while. The painter sat in judgment on his ways, the painter turned him to and from the light, talked about art, or bade him lift his head, judged the lips' paleness and the temple's white, and now his work abides, the man is dead. But is he dead, this dusty study drear, creaks in its panels, that the man is here? Here, beyond doubt, he lived in that old day. He was a doctor here, the student thought. Here, when the puce was new, that now is grey. That simpering man his daily practice wrought. Here, he let blood, prescribed the pill and drop. The leech, the diet, here his verdict given. Brought agonies of hoping to a stop. Here, his condemned confessioners were shriven. What is that book he holds, the key too dim? To read, to know, some little book he wrote, forgotten now, but still the key to him, he sacrificed his vision for his coat. I see the man, a simpering mask that hid, a seeing mind that simpering men forbid. Those are his books, no doubt, untouched, undusted, unread, since last he left them on the shelves. Octavo sermons that the fox has rusted, sides splitting off from brown decaying twelves. This was his room, this darkness of old death, this coffin room with lights like embrasures. The place is poisonous with him, like a breath on glass he stains the spirit, he endures. Here is his name within the sermon book. And verse, when hungry worms my body eat, he leans across my shoulder as I look, he who is God or pasture to the wheat. He who is dead is still upon the cell, a check, an inhibition, a control. I draw the bolts, I am alone within, the moonlight through the coloured glass comes faint, mottling the passage wall like human skin. Pale with the breathings left of withered paint. But others walk the empty house with me. There is no loneliness within these walls. No more than there is stillness in the sea. Or silence in the eternal waterfalls. There in the room to right they sit at feast. The dropping grey beard with the cold blue eye. The lad, his son, that should have been a priest. And he, the rake who made his mother die. And he, the gambling man who staked the throw. They look me through, they follow when I go. They follow with still footing down the hall. I know their souls, those fellow tenants mine. Their shadows dim, those colours on the wall. They point my every gesture with a sign. That grey beard cast his aged servant forth. After his forty years of service done, the gambler supped up riches as the north sups with his death the glories of the sun. The lad betrayed his trust, the rake was he who broke two women's hearts to ease his own. They nudge each other as they look at me. Shadows all are yet as hard as stone. And there he comes, that simpering man who sold his mind for coat of puce and penny gold. O oh, ruinous house, within whose corridors none but the wicked and the mad go free. On the dark stairs they wait, behind the doors they crouch. 
They watch or creep to follow me. Deep in old blood your ominous bricks are red. Firm in old bones your wall's foundation stand. With dead men's passions built upon the dead. With broken hearts for lime. Oaths for sand. Terrible house. Whose horror I have built. Sin after sin unseen as sand that slips. Telling the time till now. The heaped guilt. Cries and the planets circle to eclipse. You only are the daunter. You alone clutch till I feel your ivy on the bone. Haunted Houses by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow All houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors the harmless phantoms on their errands glide with feet that make no sound upon the floors. We meet them at the doorway, on the stair, along the passages they come and go, impalpable impressions on the air, a sense of something moving to and fro. There are more guests at table than the hosts invited. The illuminated hall is thronged with quiet, inoffensive ghosts, as silent as the pictures on the wall. The stranger at my fireside cannot see the forms I see, nor hear the sounds I hear. He but perceives what is, while unto me all that has been is visible and clear. We have no title deeds to house or lands, owners and occupants of earlier dates. From graves forgotten stretch their dusty hands, and hold in mortmain still their old estates. The spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere, and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapours dense, vital breath of more ethereal air. Our little lives are kept in equipoise by opposite attractions and desires, the struggle of the instinct that enjoys, and the more noble instinct that aspires. These perturbations, this perpetual jar of earthly wants and aspirations high, come from the influence of an unseen star, an undiscovered planet in our sky. And as the moon from some dark gate of cloud throws o'er the sea a floating bridge of light, across whose trembling planks our fancies crowd into the realm of mystery and night, so from the world of spirits there descends a bridge of light, connecting it with this. Ah, uh, whose unsteady floor that sways and bends, wander our thoughts above the dark abyss. One need not be a chamber to be haunted, by Emily Dickinson. One need not be a chamber to be haunted, one need not be a house. The brain has corridors surpassing material place. Far safer of a midnight meeting external ghost than an interior confronting that whiter host. Far safer through an abbey gallop the stones a chase than moonless one's own self-encounter in lonesome place. Ourself, behind ourself concealed, should startle most. Assassin hid in our apartment be horrors least. The prudent carries a revolver. He bolts the door, o'erlooking a superior spectre more near. Shadwell Stare by Wilfred Owen I am the ghost of Shadwell Stair, along the wharves by the water house, and through the cavernous slaughter house. I am the shadow that walks there. Yet I have flesh both firm and cool, and eyes tumultuous as the gems of moons and lamps in the full Thames, when dusk sails wavering down the pool. 
Shuddering, the purple street arc burns, where I watch always, from the banks, dolorously, the shipping clanks, and after me a strange tide turns. I walk till the stars of London wane, and dawn creeps up the Shadwell stair, and when the crowing sirens blare, I, with another ghost, am laying. Haunted Seas by Kale Young Rice A gleaming glassy ocean under a sky of grey A tide that dreams of motion or moves as the dead may A bird that dips and wavers over lone waters round Then with a cry that quavers is gone, a spectral sound The brown sad seaweed drifting far from the land and lost the faint warm fog unlifting, the derelict long tossed, but now at rest, though haunted, by the death-scenting shark, whose prey, no more undaunted, slips from it, spent, stark. Wraith by Edna St. Vincent Millay Thin rain, whom are you haunting, that you haunt my door? Surely it is not I she's wanting, someone living here before. Nobody's in the house but me. You may come in if you like, and see. Thin as thread, with exquisite fingers. Have you seen her, any of you? Grey shawl, and leaning on the wind, and the garden showing through. Glimmering eyes, and silent mostly, sort of a whisper, sort of a purr, asking something, asking it over, if you get a sound from her. Ever see her, any of you? Strangest thing I've ever known. Every night since I moved in, and I came to be alone. Thin rain, hush with your knocking. You may not come in. This is I that you hear rocking. Nobody's with me, nor has been. Curious how she tried the window. Odd the way she tries the door. Wonder just what sort of people could have had this house before. If you enjoy the show, why not become a patron on Patreon and gain access to exclusive content? It's the surest way to help me keep creating. You can also buy me a coffee, like, subscribe, comment, share, follow on social media, and read the description for more information about the show and how you can engage with it. Until next time, sweet dreams.